it was good news that there's a draft social care bill announced in the Queen's speech. That's progress. But it was disappointing. It wasn't a full bill ready to be implemented now. The government have talked about the chronic failings of social care. They've talked about the need for radical reform. But we're concerned and worried that a draft bill and a progress report on funding at a later date might mean this issue is kicked into the long grass once again. Part of the problem is that people think social care is free. They think it's like the NHS, there for when you need it. And the fact is it just isn't there. It's getting harder to access care. Care is of a increasingly poor quality and people do not know that's the fact. So when they go to get care, they're often angry, they're often in a distraught situation, but that means that there isn't a mass movement of people marching on the streets for the reform of care. So all too often, the political parties don't feel the public pressure and public anger and urgency to reform care, although the case for reform is very strong. The other problem is we need a step change in how we pay for care and uh, under any options the government is going to have to go to the country and say individuals will need to pay more and the state will need to pay more and in these times of austerity that's quite a difficult sell. Well how we fund care is critical to the future delivery of a new radical system there are many different options. The general public prefer that uh, social care is paid for through general taxation. Now we know this isn't popular with the politicians and there are a number of ways in which it could be paid for, looking potentially at disability benefits, looking at uh, older, wealthier older people paying more, looking at taxation and t uh, pensions relief, many, many options about how you can pay for it. All of them are quite thorny in terms of how you implement them in policy terms and or particularly unpopular with the groups affected. And this is one of the problems. It means all of us, one way or another, will be having to pay more. And the politicians have shied away from taking this debate, namely how we pay for care, to the public. We hear them on a daily basis, older people in their carers, are not getting the support when they can no longer cope on their own. This is support with the essentials of everyday living, getting out of bed, help with feeding, help it with keeping active and independent. And the quality of life for these people is often miserable. They're telling us they can't cope and they're lonely and isolated. But it's not just the individual effect, it's the effect on the NHS because we're seeing increasing numbers of older people being rushed into hospital, which we know is very expensive, often when they needn't have gone. And also, uh, from an employment perspective, many people are having to give up their work and act as full-time carers to take care of their parents and their relatives. And this is having a big economic impact on the economy as a whole. I think the government needs to be bold and it needs to deliver on its promise of radical reform of social care and we want to see a social care system that delivers high quality care to more people at a much earlier point so we're preventing uh, ill health rather than um, increasing the likelihood of ill health and poor quality of life. We want to see a system that has good information and advice that takes the fear away of having your lifetime saving in your home, often taken away from you, that enables you to take the care with you wherever you are in the country, and that really importantly ensures high quality care with carers and workers that individuals can trust, and that a system that supports carers to continue to provide that much needed support for their family and relatives.